Hey guys, welcome to week 187 of the Super Mario World ROM Hack Races. Today's level was made by Orca, who used to frequently participate in the races, and also made 5 previous levels. This is rated 6 out of 10 for difficulty, and is titled LaForge Flips the Switch. Originally, the name of the level was redacted from us until the race started, but I don't fully understand why. Orca also made Comfort Zone, Titan Mario, and the new Comfort Zone, which I played recently and I really enjoyed it a lot. Let's go ahead and get started. Things don't always go your way. GLHF. Somehow, right at the beginning, I managed to be holding run and jump. That made me fall at the same speed as that blue Koopa. I realized the instant that I stomped on that yellow Koopa that he needs to go in the shell and turn it into a disco shell. And here's the gimmick of the level. Disco shells don't home in on Mario. They just constantly move forward like a regular shell does. They do retain the bounciness of disco shells. So if you land on top of the left side, it bounces you to the left, and bouncing on the right side will bounce you to the right. I did manage to use that beetle shell properly the first time I got to it. You have to kick it to the left so that you can bounce off of it on the right side. You can't just pick it up because it would collide with the disco shell below. Somehow I think this is the first time my puppy is showing up on YouTube. This is Toad, she's a beagle, and she's four months old here. The reason I'm holding her during the race is because she was getting into things. So down here I have to bounce off the buzzy beetles. The disco shell continues up above. It hits the on-off switches on its own. That prevents me from waiting on those blocks that are activated by the on-off switches. This is the last little bit with this disco shell. I just have to survive as I'm waiting for the winged platform on the right side. I've got some room to breathe and think here. The glass half blocks are one ways, so I can't go back over to the left. I can already tell I need to ride that disco shell to the right. What I want to do is get it to bounce off of the right wall, then ricochet off the block beneath me, and I can start riding it. My timing was uh, a little bit off. This is a little better, but I'm still a little bit late, so it bounces me to the left. I can see there's a pipe there, so I need to be really careful about when I ride through there the next time that I bounce up where I can actually go in the pipe. I've never used anything like these disco shells before. You can actually treat them very closely to how you would a normal disco shell. They just force you to move at full speed. I really don't even have to adjust my height very much here. It's almost three full bounces off the disco shell. There's no visible checkpoint in that room, but as soon as we go to the next section, I hear the checkpoint sound. Now I get to deal with two of these non-homing disco shells. I start out between them, and then hitting the on-off switch separates out the disco shells. It's really cool how I'm able to change the level to allow these disco shells to separate and then come closer together to change the type of obstacle that I'm having to deal with. I sort of forget that holding a throw block in my hand is going to collide with the disco shell as I bounce off of it. Maybe if I was further to the right I could have kept that alive. There's a really good coin indicator there, but I was confused by what it was trying to tell me to do. At this point, I just couldn't figure out how I was supposed to hit the on-off switch and also keep that throw block alive. I messed up here and let the disco shells die, but I'm taking this opportunity to actually look ahead and see what I'm supposed to be doing next. I need to have a lot less speed when I throw that throw block up, and then throwing it forward into that turn block is the last time I'll need it. I can see the P-switch on the right side. I can't actually do anything with it right now, but I'm sure it's going to be useful later. This is as far ahead as I can see. I don't have anything else to hit that on-off switch. I know I'll need the disco shells, but I'm not quite sure what to do with them yet. And this, I'm sure, is what the coin indicator is telling me to do. Land on the right side, jump, then throw. 
I then need to be fast to make sure the shells don't collide. Once I'm down here with these two shells, I slow down a little bit to see what's happening, and the left shell gets away from me. So yeah, this section needs to be taken basically at full speed. I wasn't able to really see down there before, but it does make sense to just keep running to the left. There's some more coin indicators there telling me to jump up. While I was doing this, I used a little trick where I just fell down and bounced off the disco shell. It was really the same as jumping up, just kind of cooler. And this is kind of similar to a section that we had in the first area, where I just have to survive on top of this disco shell as I'm waiting for it to let me through. Now this P-switch that we see here, this actually came from up top when we first started hitting those on-off switches. I like this second section a lot. There's a lot of tight timing, but it basically just works out if you keep moving. I make myself really nervous about this P-switch because I collected the coin underneath it. It didn't make it a lot harder to get in there. It was more just the psychological effect of not having ground where I could have had it. And finally, after this entire level, we see a regular disco shell. I was sort of waiting for one to show up, and the way this room is shaped, if you're not paying attention and being careful, it can really easily get you if you're just expecting it to travel like a regular shell. These disco shells were new for me. In the first section, it just kind of worked out like a disco shell that I had to take at max speed. And in the second section, they might as well have just been regular shells right up until the survival section at the end. My time for this level was an hour, 28 minutes, and 1 second. That put me in 12th place out of the 18 racers who finished. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I'm going to keep putting out my part of every week's ROM hack race. Uh, if you'd like to see more, you can subscribe to me here on YouTube. Uh, you can also find me on Twitch and TikTok. My links are down in the description. It's over!